good to see. Um, you know, Kyron Lacey has had a great uh, sprint. Let's see him uh, in a game-like situation um, continue to do that. I, I thought I thought that was clear. And then the other thing that we highlighted is this a running game and, and how important that is with our offensive line to exert our will. And, and, I, and I thought I saw that. So the tenants that we talked about relative to leading up to this game, you know, I, I saw a lot of them. Now, you also saw the things that we have to get better at. Certainly, you know, we can't let the ball over our head. You know, we're, you know, we had some coverage mistakes. Uh, those can't continue to happen, certainly. Um, you know, certainly, you know, we got to continue to uh, evaluate and, and recruit at the, the defensive tackle position. Uh, that's a must. Uh, I like what our edges are doing. Um, we're getting good pressure from the edge, but, you know, we've got to be really stout inside. So, you know, th those are a couple of the observations that I think were what we talked about as a group in the sessions that we had that I saw today. So with that, go at it. We're going to have to take Gabe, and we're going to have to get Gabe some reps against, you know, Will Campbell. We're going to have to get him up against Emery, you know, because he's earned that now that we've got to be able to, to see what he looks like against those guys. Um, what I liked about Caleb was patience today. He was a lot more patient on his running fits. He was a lot more north and south. He had been a guy that had a tendency to, to bounce out and bleed out to the sideline instead of just hitting the thing north and south. And that was really encouraging with his physicality and speed if he hits these things north and south, as you saw in the goal line uh, piece of our scrimmage, you know, he can crease a, a defense. Sorry, I meant to say Kyle Jackson. Well, Caleb did a great job. Yeah. And you might have said Kylan, but um, I thought Kylan did a nice job in coverage. But again, you know, his skill set is such that, you know, he's going to do a really good job on the tight ends. And, and we expect him to do that. I think what we need to see is his run fits. And, and, you know, we'll have to watch the film to see see that. Middle coach, uh, I saw you grab Nuss early and talk to him a little bit. What did you think of his day and how he settled in? I thought it was good. Um, you know, I, I thought there was a run read where he tried to, you know, uh, spit the ball out early with Major Burns. You know, Major kind of plays with him a little bit on the line of scrimmage off, playing a little bit of cat and mouse. And... You know, I told him, listen, if he's on the line of scrimmage, he can't get into his B-gap fit. Just hand the ball off. He can't get there. And, and proximity sometimes forces him to do some things that he shouldn't do. So other than that, I thought he did a really nice job. Uh, the throw uh, as he stepped up in the pocket was, you know, quintessential in terms of what he's able to do. He keeps his eyes down the field. That's a huge thing, right? As he steps up in the pocket, he sees, you know, an open receiver down the field. I thought he was clean today. I thought he was efficient. I thought he did the things that we expected him to do. Well, one of them was cover two, and, and, and we're, we're, you know, we're, we're in cover three and we're playing cover two. I mean, so the corner's rolled up. He's supposed to be a deep defender. I mean, you can't have those kind of mistakes. Um, they're, they're, they're unacceptable. And, and that's going to cost you a chance to be on the field. Um, so that's one thing. And then we just got flat out outrun for the football. Um, you know, we were in a coverage that we're supposed to be over the top. We just got flat out beat um, in those, those situations. So sometimes you just got to take a hard look at, you know, who do we have, you know, and, and what kind of situations do we put them in against, you know, um, you know, an elite receiver. And, and we weren't game playing against our defense today, right? So, you know, if we got in that kind of situation, we may have to game plan and, and help out a corner in that situation. We didn't do that today. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I think the defensive line had the upper hand on our offensive line. Those guys didn't get very comfortable in the pocket. Um, clearly, I don't know what the numbers were, but they, it didn't appear to me standing back there they were very efficient. Um, but a lot of that was they, they didn't have a lot of time to get their feet set either as I was standing back there. And, again, I could be wrong when I watched the film, but um, I think Ricky was 50%. And, uh, you know, A.J. was 
you know, just, just a little bit better than 50%. Um, so, you know, we got some work to do there. You know, I thought the ball came out really well with, with Colin. Um, looked clean, looked efficient there. Um, you know, and Garrett was, was what, seven of seven. So um, we got some work to do there. I know I know the basic tenets of defense relative to um, the the believability, the um, the energy, the the want to. All those things are going to be there, which are important um, to, to as 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 a foundation. They'll be there. Then we got to execute, um, and and so we need we need to get some help at the defensive tackle position, which we will. We're we're, we're addressing it, and and we got to. You know, obviously, figure out you know what our corner situation is going to be. I think we answer those two. I think this defense will be a, a solid defense, but we've got to answer those two questions moving forward. Peter, uh, coach, with, with Colin Jackson, you mentioned last year as a freshman. There, there's still a lot of things that he's learning. How have you seen him develop this spring and this offseason to, you know, to, to play some more? Yeah, he's a young player. And, and I think you guys know me by now that young players have to do things off the field, in the classroom. They, they have to be on time. They've got to do all the right things before we give them a bigger role on the field. He's working towards all that stuff. Um, he's a good kid, and, and we like him. But, you know, all of those things have to come together um, if we're going to give him a bigger piece of the pie. And he's working on it. He's getting better. He's making progress. Um, but, you know, there's, there's still room for growth there. John? Uh, coach, I know the corners and defensive tackles may not have played as well as they wanted, but have you seen the coaching kind of make an impact already with both Davis and Corey Raven there? Oh, absolutely. And, and look, the, the, the long approach to this is, you know, just look at who's on campus, you know, who we're recruiting. And, and um, I feel, look, we got to win right away, and, and, and I get that. And, and we're, we're going to put together a defense that, that puts us in a position to win the SEC. But um, if you want to look at this from a, a longer view, um, I, I've had a lot of players in front of me uh, over the past three months since we've hired those two that I hadn't seen in a couple of years. So that's a really good thing uh, because we're going we're gonna to get the guys that we need at those positions, and, and Bo and Corey are making an impact there. He did. He's a little bit of, of further along because he's been here longer, obviously. Um, you know, I, I like what he's doing. Um, he's made a lot of progress, and he's ready to play. You know, we, he's, he's building a bank of trust. He didn't have a lot in there, but he's building it, um, and, and I like where he's going. Um, we like his energy. We like his, uh, the way he cares about what he's doing, and, um, yeah, I, I think he's going to make an impact in our defense. Yeah, I think he came in, you know, probably with a little bit, um, you know, too much on his shoulders, you know, to come in and, and try to be, you know, whatever, right, the next great LSU wide receiver. And I think he put a lot of pressure on himself. I think in the last, I'd say, week or so of practice, he really settled in nicely, started to um, play, I think, a lot more uh, at ease, Using his speed, and and now we're we're finding ways to get him the football, and and the same thing with Daniels. You know, I thought Daniels was really good today. Made the nice catch uh, late in in the uh, the spring game, uh, but he really showed a consistency late. I think both those guys came in trying to maybe do a little bit too much, and have kind of settled in nicely, uh, and will be really um, solid players for us. Matt, you mentioned Gabe Rella for Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, McBride, I think, at the safety position, you know, gives you great length. Uh, and he's a tackler, which, you know, you really like for somebody that size. Sometimes, 
you know, you don't get a tackler, you know, at six foot four at that position because you expect that they're going to have great range. But he's a really solid tackler, and I, and I could see that today. He's been really impressive, and and uh, PJ at the cornerback position has had a really good spring for us, and I. I think as we continue to get him developed physically, you know, I think he came in at 153 pounds. He's up to like 168. He's put on about 15 pounds. He's got to put on some more weight as he continues to do that. You know, I think he's a real um, guy as it as it relates to competing for, for playing time. So, you know, I think those two guys in particular, you, you mentioned, you know, Relaford, um, I, I think they've been – you know, really impressive uh, in, in, in the spring. Not as consistent as I would like. Um, I, I thought today was an opportunity for him to just say, there is no competition here. And he's got to be more consistent, quite frankly. He's long. He's got all the tools. Um, he's a classic case of today, right? You know, you've got 14 practices. You look great. And today the, bo the ball was, was wobbling. It was, not, it was not what I was looking for, nor was it what he was looking for either. He's a great kid. But, look, it's about performance on Saturdays, and he's got to do a better job. We've got time for two more. Brett and then Corey. The um, defensive breakdown that you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. No, the most surprising thing is that we, in my 33 years, I've never had anybody run into the damn kicker. I mean, I mean, really? I mean, that, <laughs> that's crazy, you know? I mean, I've had situations where we've blown coverage in the spring, but um, we just have to be smarter in those situations. I think, you know, one time, as I mentioned, we got run by, you know, by an elite receiver. Um, that's going to happen. Uh, in the spring because we're going to let the kids play. You know, we're not going to have a – you know, Blake was was very vanilla today, right? He probably played two coverages. I think he, he, he sent the nickel a couple of times. But that was – we weren't showing USC anything today, right? So that was vanilla defense. As I mentioned earlier, we would have done a lot of game planning against an elite receiver that. So we were on an island a little bit. What we can't have is we can't be playing cover two – when we're supposed to be playing cover three. And, and there's no safety help over the top when the corner's rolled up because he's in the middle of the field. So somebody's going to run by him. So we just can't have mental breakdowns like that. Corey? Yeah, I, I, to me, what we've been striving for is – controlling the line of scrimmage, running the football, and that will set up the explosiveness within this offense. It's not going to be Jaden Daniels, Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas. It's going to have a different look to the explosiveness, but you can still be explosive. But it starts at the line of scrimmage. And if you can't win the line of scrimmage with this offense, you will not be explosive. We cannot be finesse, five wide, spread it out, and, and do it that way. So... That's what's most satisfying is that we're going to have to start with the offensive line, controlling the line of scrimmage through the running game. And if we do that, you'll get the explosive plays. And to me, that's what I saw a glimpse of today. We still got some work to do, but that was a good first step. Hey, Coach. Great. Thanks, guys.